Okay, now that we've got our triggers set up, let's bring them into Kismet. So we're going to select the Kismet button, hit that, and you now see the code that you've already created. And, but we're, what we're going to do is actually going to create a new sequence, which is a nice way to organize uh, chunks of code. So as you can see in the lower right hand corner, we've got the sequences window. We've got one sequence and it can be expanded because I've already created a sequence. So you can see this trigger scoring bin sequence. So in order to do that, in order to create a new sequence, right click, go to create new sequence, and then name it whatever you would like. I named mine trigger scoring bins. So I'm going to cancel because I don't, I've already created it. So go ahead and click OK once you've set yours up. And then if you click on the newly created sequence, it's going to bring you up to a blank screen. Um, but this is actually code that I've already created and that you will be creating in my sequence. OK, so we've got our new sequence uh, that we're going to work in for the scoring bin functionality. So let's go ahead and bring in our triggers and our lights. So I'm going to minimize Kismet. We've already got the trigger selected, so make sure you have it selected as well. Go ahead and open Kismet back up. We're going to right click. We're going to say new event using trigger underscore three, which is the name of my trigger. Yours might be a different number. And we're going to say touch. Okay, and we're going to minimize again. And we're going to select our toggleable light. Open Kismet back up. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to say new object variable using point light toggleable. And then your number might be different than mine. All right. So we've got those two things set up in our Kismet window and so we're ready to do a little bit of scripting. Okay, now there's a couple things we need to do to this trigger to make sure it understands uh, the Plinko balls as opposed to the player which is its default setting. So let's do a couple things here. Um, notice this field down here that I'm hovering my mouse around in the properties window called class proximity types. This is an array type of uh, field and if we click on the new icon we get a new entry to the array. And what we want to do is use this drop down menu here, scroll all the way up to the K's, and we're going to select K-Actor. So this is going to tell this trigger to understand K-Actors, which coincidentally is what our sphere, our Plinko balls are. Okay, next what we need to do is set the max trigger count to zero, like you've done already, so that it has an infinite number of times that it can fire off. And finally, this player only, obviously we don't want that, so we're going to uncheck that. Okay, great. So we've got our point light toggleable here. We've got our trigger set up to being touched. Uh, we're ready to move forward. By default, all lights are turned on. So what we're going to do is on level load, we're going to turn them all off so that when the Plinko balls go into the scoring bins, they're able to turn them on. So right click in your Kismet window, go to new event, and go to level loaded. Okay, so next we need uh, the functionality for toggling. So we're going to right click again, just like we've been doing this whole time. And we're going to go to New Action, and we're going to go down to Toggle, and Toggle. Okay, so let's kind of drag this up here, and we're going to drag a connection from Load and Invisible to Turn Off. And we're going to drag our target to the light. So Level Loads turns off the light. Pretty simple. Okay, so now let's take our Touched Trigger, and we'll drag the Touched node over to the light. I'm sorry, first we need to create a new toggle. Let's do that first. Let's go to new action and we'll go to toggle, toggle. We're going to make a few toggles today. And let's go to touched, turn on. So we've turned the lights off, we're going to turn them back on. And let's take the target of the toggle and drag it to what else but the toggleable point light. Okay, and we don't want these lights to stay on for forever, so let's create a brand new toggle. And we're going to drag the out from this, this other toggle here to turn off and set the target to the light. Now we don't want it to do it immediately. The player probably won't even notice the light being turned on because it's going to get turned off too fast. So let's set a delay. So right click on the out of the first toggle and we'll say set active delay. And one second is just fine, so we're going to hit OK. With that, we've got pretty much all of our light functionality built. Pretty simple. So now let's tackle our scoring functionality. So let's go ahead and right click. We're going to go to new action. We're go, going to go down to math. And we're going to go to add int. So we get an add int node. And so we need something to score, store our score in. So let's go to right click, new variable, int, and int again. And we'll drag a connection from a to our new variable. And zero is a good increment our score by. So let's, let's create a new variable. So we're going to right click, go to new variable, go to int, and int again. And let's drag a connection from b to this second variable. Now select this second variable and let's go down to integer value and let's set this value to 25. So anytime this scoring bin gets fired off we're going to add 25 to the score. 
And finally, for our add int functionality, let's drag int result to our score variable, which is zero, so that whenever we add to the score, we then plug the result back into it so that it can increment as we go. All right, I'm gonna control alt select all this, kind of move it over <coughs> where it makes a little bit more sense. And it's Plinko ball, the score functionality fires off as well as the lights. One final thing we need to add is the scoring output to the screen. So right click, go to new action, go to miscellaneous, and let's create another log object. We'll drag the out of the add int to the in of the log. And if you'll notice, the target of the log is, let's call it fuchsia. And that does not match with our teal integer variables. So we know that we don't have, we don't have the correct uh, objects exposed. So let's go to right click on the log, go to expose variable, and go down to int. Now we've got matching colors, so let's drag the integer over to the variable um, that represents our score. All right, so now any time the trigger is touched, we do all of our math and we output the results to the screen so the player can see what their score is. All right, great. So that is all the functionality for the scoring bins. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll over to the right here a little bit so you can see the finished product. All of this here looks very familiar. It's exactly what we just created. And then up below it, you see it basically duplicated two more times, but the triggers are different and the lights are different because obviously there are separate triggers and lights for each of the scoring bins. Another thing of note is the score here plugs into the add int of all the separate scoring bin functionality because the score is affected by each scoring bin. Make sure you do that. And lastly, the level loaded toggle off the lights, that is connected to all of the individual lights. Make sure you do that, otherwise your lights won't turn off from in all the scoring bins when the level loads. Okay, so we've got this all created. Let's go in and play our level. Okay, so I'm gonna close my Kismet window. Let's do a build all, make sure we got everything updated and let's click our play button. Okay, so you've seen that we can spawn the Plinko balls before. Now when they hit the bins, we get lights that turn on, then after a second they turn off, and on the left-hand screen we see a score that adds up as we go. So this is your finished product, and hopefully by going through this tutorial you've learned a lot about getting triggers working with lights, uh, spawning actors, and very kind of a, a cool functionality of this project was the fact that we can get triggers to fire off on non-player objects. So there's a lot of powerful things you can do with that in your own level. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial.